Hello and welcome back. You are returning to How to RPG because we're doing Monster Lore. Ogres is on the menu for today. And uh, no, there's no onions served with these ogres. You see before you the Creature Codex and Esper's Emporium of Esoterica, both very good monster books. I thought I would at least uh, throw them out there so you could see them uh, because I like kind of uh, promoting uh, people who actually make good stuff and they have made good stuff, have they not? Anyway, uh, I suggest that you feel free to take part in the poll. Uh, you're going to also probably find that the sound on my channel may have slightly adjusted because there was an OBS update. So it was OBS. Something had changed with OBS which had affected the sound and it should be mostly fixed now. I'm going to put up a poll. Feel free to take part. Hello, uh, Fred Hubber. I am glad to see that you are able to be here on time. So... I'll warn you now, when I talk about the ogre, this is not just the D&D ogre. This is not the Dungeons and Dragons ogre. This is the ogre throughout, throughout mythology and how to apply it into a role-playing game. There might be concepts that I've taken from D&D or other role-playing games, but I have pulled most of my information from mythology. So there's a lot of that, and it's not clear how that all looks. So grab some food, some drink, make sure you're comfortable, get ready because um, I'm pretty sure you're going to find this interesting. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm re reasonably I'm re reasonably sure that I've, uh, I've done a good job with this one. Okay, let's make it happen, shall we? <clears throat> <clears throat> Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Weller, and today I want to talk about role-playing games. And today is Monster Law. The Ogre. That's right. Not robots, but the Ogre. Now, the Ogre in mythology and in terms of lore and Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder or whatever system you're using will obviously look slightly different, but there are some things that are essentially the same. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover those, give you a breakdown of that. I'm going to give you some general concepts, biology, combat, your society, habitat, ecology, how to incorporate it into your adventure, how to defeat it, and the origins of the, the ogre. So there's a lot of information to present today. So I apologize if there's too much, but these are not short videos. So ogre monster lore for a role-playing game, here we go. The ogre are generally big, ugly, greedy giants that live by ambushing, raiding, and just theft. They are ill-tempered and nasty. The ogre is often found in the service as a mercenary in the ranks of, say, Null, Orc, or Goblinoid tri tribes. They tend to stick around them. The ogre mingles freely with giants and trolls because they are likely related genetically. Now, the adult ogre stands about 9 feet tall or taller than that, and can weigh 300 pounds or more. The skin colour of an ogre ranges widely from a light yellow to a deep black and brown. Ogres have long greasy hair, it's either blackish blue to a dark green, and this is during adolescence. But adult ogres suffer frequently from hair loss uh, because of a hormonal imbalance. Well, I'll, I'll explain this more in a second. Uh, dressing in poorly cured furs and animal hides, the ogre cares little for their appearance generally. But that's not the case with every single ogre. You will find some who dress differently to this. It is common for ogres to speak orc, troll, giant, goblinoid, as well as their own guttural language, which kind of suggests that they aren't that stupid. To be able to actually communicate in so many different languages, you need to have some sort of brain power. The typical ogre's lifespan is 90 years or more. Now, the biology of a, an ogre, there's not very much out there, and so you'll find most of this is relatively new, or I have constructed it in this case based off the, uh, the mythology of the ogre. It's not just their genetics that contribute to the ogre's great or giant size. It is also partly due to the large pituitary gland that they have and a rich diet of meat. Now the pituitary gland is responsible for growth and the more hormonal release you have from the pituitary gland, the larger you are likely to grow or the taller you will grow. So that's part of the reason, and also a rich meat diet also helps. With an overabundance of uh, fast twitch muscle fibres in the ogre, they are extremely strong. You've probably heard me talk about 
fast twitch muscle fibers, fibers before. Additional stomachs is not something that a creature normally possesses, but the ogre is unusual in that it has four different stomachs, making its belly appear obese, when in fact it is not obese. It just has four stomachs to house in there. The thyroid gland commonly uh, becomes um, dysfunctional in an adult ogre. So the thyroid, thyroid gland is responsible for quite a few different things. So as a result of this dysfunction in an adult ogre, you get extreme moods, you get shifts in body weight, uh, you will get an altered mental, mental capacity, which usually means that the mental capacity reduces rather than expands. You'll have hair loss, as I mentioned before, heart palpitations are quite common, and a range of other health issues which I won't go into. So they are, they're getting quite sickly and uh, problematic, and yet they still live to 90 years or more. Unusually long arms is a genetic adaption that the ogre has developed to help them grab their prey. I could not find anything more on that. Uh, the hormone ghrelin uh, is produced in excessive, excessive amounts inside the ogre's stomach. Now, uh, ghrelin, spelt G-H-R-E-L-I-N, is a substance that actually makes you feel hungry. And because it, reduce, uh, it releases so much of this um, hormone into its stomach, the result is the monster always feels hungry. Prone to skeletal deformity, the ogre's bones enlarge. They also twist and um, warp, and they will also harden, making them quite strong. And this will give them this frightening appearance, so they don't feel quite right in some way. The brain of an ogre is unusually large because of its extraordinarily large head. For some reason, an ogre has a, an a overproportionately large head compared to the rest of their body, uh, much like their, their arms, which kind of suggests that the ogre is in fact highly intelligent from past research. But... Modern investigation into the ogre brain indicates that they are extremely stupid. Unfortunately, there's a little twist on this. I think, in fact, what has happened is a, a clever misinformation has been spread by the ogres to produce or sort of reduce the um, perceived threat of the ogre, because the ogre is a, a significant threat to your survival. So by convincing its prey that they are, in fact, stupid is probably a good thing to do. Uh, not good for everybody else, but certainly good for the ogre, when in fact it's quite clever. So there's a lot of conflicting research around how clever or stupid an ogre is. Now combat for an ogre kind of looks like this. In small numbers, ogres tend to fight in an, sort of an unorganized manner with poor tactics. But groups of 11 or more ogres will have a leader and or a chieftain, possibly more than one leader and a chieftain and they will employ advanced strategies. So don't assume that you're dealing with stupid uh, monsters when you deal with a large group of ogres because there's probably a leader and they will be much more intelligent than the average ogre. Ogres have some skill in wielding weapons as they use them for, for hunting. So it's not like they, they're just going to be using um, silly clubs. They will have other weapons available to them. As can be expected, ogres favour um, sort of um, hurling rocks or debris from a distance or getting up close uh, to sort of get in and, and smash their enemy with melee weapons. So it's either hurling rocks or tree branches or things like that, any kind of projectile, or getting up close and smashing you with a melee weapon. Female ogres are generally weaker than the male of the same age, and the young ogres fight by using hit and run tactics so they don't fight in the same way as the adult ogre now the reason being is they can't get away with it they have to use smarter tactics and also too that degradation in their brain has not started yet some ogres have been reported to change shape and size through innate magical properties and when i say change shape and size what i mean is they can transform not all of them but some can transform into another animal completely now the habitat and society of your ogre is a little bit like this. Ogre tribes are found anywhere. You can find them absolutely anywhere. You can find them in deep caverns. You can find them on a mountaintop. Tribes can um, usually uh, consist of about 16 to 20 males and 2 to 12 females with about 2 to 8 young. But that's just a rough sort of um, uh, 
uh, formation of a, a tribe. So they're not huge tribes, but they are a collection of them. Now, ogre shamans, if present, will have access to a, um, a sphere of combat tools. And this will exist in terms of like divination magic, healing magic, protection magic, transformation magic, and also light magic. Unusual why it's specific to that, but that seems to be the things that people have come across so far. Ogres live by raiding and scavenging, but they will eat absolutely anything and anyone if they can get the chance to do so. Uh, as it happens, ogres favour and have a fondness for eating elf, dwarf, halfling, humans, but specifically they like e eating children and they like eating babies because they have um, tender flesh. Quite sick, I know. There is a chance that an ogre lair will include slaves if you come across an ogre lair. Captured prisoners are almost always kept as slaves or food for an ogre. So that if you get captives, there's only two purposes for that to be taking place. And that's either they're going to be a slave to work for the ogre or they're going to be food. And if you start getting too old and you can't work, then you're food. Extremely aggressive ogres squabble over treasure and they cannot be trusted at all. Uh, even amongst their own kind, they will trick and deceive their own kind, given the chance. Now the ecology of your ogre is, ogres consistently plague um, human humankind or hunt down humankind, uh, small and medium sized humanoids. Uh, they do this because uh, they just find that the, the smaller races are just more delicious. So they, they tend to hunt them first. Although they will eat and uh, cannibalize uh, animals, but uh, humanoids seem to be something they particularly are fond of. I'm not sure why. An ogre lusts for silver, gold, gems, uh, jewellery. They are drawn to them by the sparkling appearance for some strange reason. Kind of like some birds are drawn to sparkling items. Most ogres are evil-natured creatures that join with other monsters to prey on the weaker uh, races. And they favour overwhelming odds rather than a fair fight. They would never really... They're not into honour. Ogres don't really worry too much about honour. It's don't care about a fair fight. Just want overwhelming odds and obliterate whoever is the opponent or um, uh, enemy. Now, when I say that ogres are evil-natured, they are generally evil-natured. Most of them are, but not all of them. You may come across a few that are not. I suppose we're going to say Shrek would be an example of one of these, I guess. But anyway, ogres have no crafting skills and aren't interested in manual labour. Now, part of the reason for this is a apparently due to the chemical imbalance in their brain. Uh, it, it affects how they are motivated, how they operate as they age. And so therefore crafting isn't something they normally do. They're not really into manual labor. They have to get somebody else to do it. Uh, even though they're quite capable of doing it, they just don't want to do it. Their brain isn't sort of chemically uh, set up that way. Now you're wondering, where do they get all their stuff? Well, they steal it. Like when it comes to weapons, they steal it. And if they're not stealing it, they're trading it with other giants who have weapons that would be about the size they need. Now, ogres are unusually lazy giant humanoids that have no ambition, no motivation to advance themselves or their primitive culture. And that's generally the case. Not always, but generally the case again. Now, how to incorporate the ogre into your adventure? How would you go about doing this? Now, all of these ideas, not all of them, but most of them, I would say, have come from the Game Master Roundtable that I did a while back. So if you hear some of these ideas and they sound familiar, it's because they were not my ideas originally. Okay. An Ogre Gladiator, that is a reigning champion in, say, a fighting arena or a fighting pit in your region. You could have, like, an Ogre that's sort of the, the gladiator for that area. An extremely depressed Ogre that is obsessed with the, uh, the fact that everybody hates him. And this is because they think that he's dumb and too big. You could have a gang of old female uh, ogres wandering around in town, pulling outrageous pranks on the locals and just causing uh, all sorts of strife, maybe painting the entire town red. You could have a man accidentally consume part of an ogre's um, body fluid, say as blood or even flesh, and then start to transform slowly into a large green ogre uh, when he gets angry. Okay, all right, that's the Hulk. I, I, I realize. Thank you, Wooly. I remember this one. You could have a pair of magical gauntlets of ogre power, 
that are cursed and when you put them on they they attach to the wearer they can't be removed and they transform the wearer slowly into an ogre kind of a fun sort of twist you can have a uh, a genetically deformed humanoid that is misunderstood with a terrible reputation so that they are discriminated against and um, uh, uh, beaten by civilizations or various civilizations because one of the things you'll come across is that the the ogre was often a terminology used for somebody who was an outcast so you could have literally included somebody who's an outcast who's genetically larger than everybody else and slightly deformed. An ogre carries, say, a shoulder basket. I think that's the best thing I could um, think of. You know, with elephants, there's usually a basket that sits on top of them if they're a war elephant. And they could be used, you know, that ogre walking around with that basket could transport smaller humanoids uh, in, in times of war. They could also be used as a, an, an opera, operational platform for a, as a siege beast of some kind. You could also have ogre, ogres with a, like a catapult uh, mounted on their back. You've probably seen this from Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. And uh, that would act as a sort of like a portable artillery unit. Quite quite handy. You could also have an ogre battering ram that uh, charges into fortified walls and doors and smashes them down by driving their head. They're probably wearing a helmet on there. But driving them, their head, head first into the structure. Probably going to kill themselves. Thank you AJ for reminding me about this. Okay, how do you defeat an ogre? Now, weapons are probably going to be something you need to be very selective about when you're dealing with an ogre. You don't want to just use any weapon. So a weapon that has reach like a pole arm offers the best advantage when trying to stay away from the ogre's hands because the further you can stay away, the better you are off because you do not want them grabbing you. That's a bad thing, okay? And they do, they're do quite strong, so they can do a lot of damage very quickly, even without any kind of sharp implement. Avoid melee combat with an ogre, much wiser, and probably fleeing, probably even smarter again. So don't fight them if you can. Using ranged attacks against an ogre is probably more useful to you if you have no other choice, if you can do so. So something like um, a crossbow, a sling, or bows, like firing arrows, uh, because you can keep your distance. You don't want to get too close to an ogre, as I mentioned. Ogres can be tricked. If you get them at the right time uh, in, in terms of their their age, you can trick them. They, they are capable of being deceived because, um, of course, they're generally con um, considered to be stupid. But as, a, as I mentioned before, this is because adult ogres start to degrade mentally over time. So if you pick an old ogre, you probably can trick an old ogre pretty well. Okay, the origins of the ogre are quite um, broad. There are some elements that are pretty much the same but I'm going to go over uh, everything that I could find that you can use and you can change it if you like you can ignore some of it it's up to you but I thought it would be nice to look at the origins of the ogre. Ogres are always described as man eaters or consuming humanoids of some kind. Whenever you see any kind of story about the ogre that's the, um, the one thing you hear about the most and what they eat is generally children and babies. That's their favorite diet out of everything else. So real people are often classified as ogres because of their physical deformity. So in the in the real world throughout history where people would grow quite large or slightly deformed, they would be called an ogre. Ogres were identified in literature as shape-shifting monsters that can transform into any type or size of animal. I had mentioned this before, and this seems to be uh, something you'll find in folklore and stories, uh, particularly Puss in Boots would be a good example where Puss in Boots actually gets an ogre to transform into a mouse and then uh, eats the mouse, tricks the ogre into actually um, uh, proving that he can turn into anything. The Oni is the Japanese version of the um, ogre, but they are slightly different. They are a, a, re, a red sort of demon monster creature that beats victims with a, an iron rod. And I'm not going to go into a lot of information on the Oni because I want to talk about the Oni again in the future. The name Ogre is interchangeable quite often when you look at mythology with giant and troll. So world mythology tends to use the word Ogre, giant and troll interchangeably. The story of Ogres was used as a cautionary tale also uh, to be told to children. <clears throat> 
Now, why would you tell the cautionary tale of ogres to children? Well, it's one to stop children venturing into areas that would be risky or dangerous. So you don't go into the forest. Don't go into the forest, um, little um, Johnny, because if you go into the forest, you'll be eaten by an ogre. Mary, don't go over there. If you go down the well, there's an ogre living at the bottom of the well, and the ogre will eat you. So it was a cautionary tale to scare children. Ogres are linked to the god Orcus as well, who ate humans in Italian mythology. Something I was not expecting, but apparently if you go far enough back, you'll find it there. And the word or name Orcus <clears throat> has popped up many, many times in different mythologies and different cultures. So, <clears throat> pardon me. So that's everything I have. <coughs> oh dear. So that, that is everything I have on the Ogre. I hope that this was useful to you, and if it was, fantastic. I want to thank my patrons for supporting me on Patreon. I want to thank you for watching and listening to what I had to say. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Uh, sorry about that, people. My voice did not hold up the whole time. Um, obviously, I probably should have taken some breaks along the way, but I didn't. Uh, so yes, kind of a bit of a breakdown in the voice there. Sorry about that. I uh, just give me a second to just get my voice back to to, to normal. <coughs> Let me know. I think you'll find the sound today is slightly better than it has been in the past, and I think it's much very much due to the. Um, I had an update just before I went live, and I think OBS is sort of uh, was probably the culprit in this case, much to my surprise. <coughs> <clears throat> so we're going to do some workshopping today on monsters. Uh, we're going to try to build some tables. These are tables that I discussed with AJ Pickett about how to go about making your own monsters, how you could build them in some way. And so I, I've got a, I've got a strategy. I've got a, uh, an idea behind this. We just need to build some fairly large tables to do this. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, hopefully I've got it under control. Hello, Fred Hubber, how are you? I'm glad you were here. Charles Butler, also, Charles Butler is a patron. Thank you for being here. We have Dungeons and Chronics, hello, welcome, and Ancient Dragon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set myself up with my phone. And I thought what would be nice is if we, I talked about this before. I talked about making a table of 100 different animals where you would take parts of that animal and put them together to make your own monster. Because what I want you to do is I want you to homebrew your own stuff. Now I know you don't need to do that. You could go and buy somebody else's book. Such as the Creature Codex. Or Tome of Beasts 1, 2, 3. Or Espers Emporium of Esoterica. Or some other book. Or a Wizards of the Coast product. Or a Paizo Beast Beastry. Look I, I, I totally get it. But <clears throat> since I am all about you making your own stuff. Um, I, I feel like this is more important to actually give you the tools you need to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at this for a second. Now i got my phone going. My phone is up and running. I can see the chat. We're going to move over to my workspace, which is not showing up yet, but we'll, we'll grab it, pull it up, and it should work. Okay, that's going. I've got that there. Hopefully the chat keeps up with me. I'm going to work, move over to where we're going to be doing our work today. That's the, no, that's the ogre. I'll put the ogre, so for example, the ogre law and the information I presented today, I'll put it up as a, a PDF on uh, Patreon, uh, as well as the other stuff uh, that I've, we've been working on during the week. So I believe the world building stuff, I'm just going to tidy that up when I get a chance, and I'll put that up uh, hopefully on Friday. I'm hoping. I'm really hoping. <laughs> okay. So this is what I need here. Now there was a discussion around like what what type of monsters do we want to deal with? Do we want to have tables that allow us to build sky or flying monsters? Or do we want to build a table that's going to be appropriate for a water-based monster or a marine monster? So the same sort of thing. Or are we dealing with a land-based monster first? Or are we going to do subterranean or underground? Those of you who are here get to pick. I um, I think that seems like a reasonable thing. I've already kind of started on 100 land-based animals that you could use for building your monsters, but 
I'm perfectly happy for us to work on something else. So those of you who are here, let me know what you would prefer. Uh, are we working on subterranean underground, or are we dealing with land-based, or are we doing, dealing with marine or, um, or water-based, or is it going to be sky or flying? So, um, hashtag, what um, animal type, type do we use for building Monsters first. Now I had this um, discussion with AJ Pickett when I was I was talking to him about how you would go about doing this, and he said to avoid, and I, I agree with him to avoid having problems in terms of ecology habitat. You need to be able to sort of group things a little bit. So that means we need to build at some point four different tables. I think it would be reasonable to build about about a hundred on each. I think there's enough animals in the animal kingdom that we can do a hundred different animals that are varied enough that you could then use. Uh, and of course, I've already kind of talked about how you would do that. You'd roll a couple of times on those tables to actually generate your monster. So those of you who are here, feel free to let me know what it is that you would like to focus on. Hello, Matt Finch. How are you doing? I like underground, but I'm game for anything. I mean, so I, I don't want you to get too worried about this. It's not like we're not going to do all of them. I will do flying and sky ones. I will do sea marine eventually. We will do land-based and we will also do um, subterranean. So I'm, I'm fine with doing all of those. Yes, it, it's very much an island of um, Moreau style. Yeah, create altar hybrids. It's, it's very AD&D. When you look at Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, that's what they did. And, and frankly, everybody who makes monsters for role-playing games does this, as they take existing animals and they just sort of take a bit of this, take a bit of that, jam it all together, and they create a new monster. Sorry, I'm, I'm having problems with my nose now. So, well, we can go underground. Island of Moreau. So we've got one vote from Matt. I'm going to um, make sure that I have myself. Or so at this point, let's. Since Matt actually said something, we can go underground. I will move myself back a little bit and get myself comfortable. Uh, we will share this so you can see it. And okay, so as you can see, I've already started on land-based. I didn't get that far. I started putting it to alphabetical order, and we need to have 100. Now you would use this to construct it. One of the things I need to know though, is I need to know, do I need to provide a description of the animal? Some animals will be very obvious in how they're constructed and what they look like, or do I need to include a description as well? I feel like this building a monster thing is something that comes naturally to young kids. Yes, yes, Charles, it does. Um, I remember things my nephews, nieces came up with for fun. Underground sounds good. Okay, we're doing subterranean today. Let me do this. Let's just do a quick cut and copy. We'll plant it under here. I'll put it in the same document so it doesn't get lost. Subterranean. So when it says subterranean animals, that means we're using them to create our monster. Sub. Terranian animals. That's not spelt right, Fred. Try that again. Okay, drop it down, give it a number. Okay, so now uh, subterranean, sub terranean animals list. Let's start. So Tell me some subterranean animals. Hashtag. You guys can help feed feed it as I go. I will obviously pull from my list on the internet, but you can help me. Um, hashtag. What are sorry? What are some subterranean animals? 
we can use to make monster. Okay, let's do this. A hy hybrid bat and man. So f first off, um, I'm not going to put down bat. And the reason I'm not putting down bat is because I'm, I'm classifying the bat as a flying creature. So I'm, I'm going to put it there, okay? So if you were wondering what, what, the, what the deal is, I'm, so I'm going to leave the bat alone. And I'm not going to consider man something that's, that's underground. The mole, we can definitely add the mole. Groundhog, mole, groundhog. Uh, ground, groundhog. Now, if I need to put in definition, a sort of a description of each animal, I mean, I'm certainly going to do that, but I don't know if we'll do that today. Badger, badger are, are a, an underground creature, aren't they? Badger. Uh, they usually live in holes, don't they? Nasty little um, um, suckers that they are. Dice Goblin, hello, welcome. Nice to have you. So uh, I need to make sure I start putting these things into into order. So cut and paste. Okay, all right. Move that around, paste that. Okay, that's working all right. So we're in we're in business. Let's keep going. Tortoise is not underground. Badger, fifteen. A burrowing owl. I didn't. I don't. I'm not sure what that is. A rabbit. Actually, a rabbit makes perfect sense. Let's put rabbit in here. Um, mice are underground, aren't they? I'm pretty sure mice are considered an underground subterranean creature. Uh, what's that? At Jubia. Jubia. I'm not sure what that is. I have to look that up. Uh, oh, okay. Let's let's have a look. What is that? Jubia is a hopping desert rodents found throughout North Africa and Asia, and are a member of the family of. Okay, they tend to live in hot deserts. Okay, all right. I so said Jubia. Let's. I wasn't entirely sure what that is when I saw that. I was like, mm, is that what's the what's the deal there? <laughs> Jubia, it is. Let's add them. Uh, is that even how you spell it or pronounce it? It's probably not how you pronounce it in the first place. I've got mole down already. Ready, um, Dungeons and Chronics. The mole has already been added. It's a type of rabbit. Oh, okay, I see. So we're not we're not really going. We're not really expanding ourselves that far. Okay, so that's platypus and poss and possible mammal. Uh, you, I don't think a platypus is an, a subterranean creature. Platypus is a, a water marine centipede. Is the centipede underground? It probably is. Okay, so I've got rabbit. Let's check subterranean in a second. Let's close this. Let's go down more. Prairie dog ants. An ant is definitely underground. Let's we can put ant in. Let's do ant. Insects are fine too, people. A burrowing owl. I am, I am so un, 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 I've never heard of a burrowing owl before. Has anybody else? What is the deal with this? A burrowing owl is called the shuko. The shuko is a small, long-legged owl found throughout open lands of North and South America. That's why I can't, I've, ne I've never heard of it. Burrowing owls can be found in grasslands. Rangelands, agricultural areas, desert. okay. The burrowing owl. But it's got wings. That's my only my only concern is you've, you were dealing with something that now has wings. And I'm just, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put burrowing owl as a question mark because it's got wings, okay. And I want to, I want to leave things that are, winged for when we do sky flying winged stuff um um that's done look right burrowing okay that's better <laughs> a little little slow there fred 
ant or beetle. Um, I feel like ant and beetle can be separated. They're, 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 they're relatively different in terms of their structure, aren't they? So we could, but beetle can go down. Beetle. Cicadas, a monster showing uh, once every 17 years could be the source of all manner of uh, lore and legends. Cicada is a flying creature, so we're going to leave that alone. Oh, what do you got here? Platypus burrows to make its home at least as uh, underground as a rabbit. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay, let's have a look. Cicada. <laughs> um, I know cicadas do burrow in the, to the ground as well. Now, hmm, 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 hmm. Uh, I'm going to put a question mark beside that. Cicada, if I write it down, I, I know they do bury themselves in the ground, but they also have wings. Cicada. And what I don't want to do is wind up having the subterranean animals list have be too similar to the, the flying animals one. Okay, let's have a look here. Snakes. Snakes, yes, you're right. They are, aren't they? Snakes, good, good show, man. Snake. Uh, let me just look up platypus while you guys are coming up with ideas. Um, platypus. Uh, what do we got here? Platypus. Plat. E puss. Let's define. A semi aquatic. Oh, it's semi aquatic. Egg laying mammal, which and which frequents lakes and streams in eastern Australia. It has a a sensitive um Palliable bill, shaped like that of a duck. Webbed feet with venomous spurs and dense fur. Okay, so I need to know. I need to know a little bit more about the platypus. That is not going to work. I can barely see that writing. Okay, so this is. Uh, text me habitat. Venom. Didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't even realize they were venomous. Diet, reproduction, evolution, conservation. Wildlife sanctuaries, captivity use, da da da. Okay, where are we? Oh, so those of you who jumped onto my channel and thought we were dealing with monsters, we, we wind up learning an awful lot about creatures. Weasels! Did somebody say the weasel? Salamander. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll put platypus here. Let's see. This is P M platypus. I'm still going to put a, a question mark beside it because I'm I don't know enough about about the platypus. I was kind of hoping the platypus would be something I could put on, under the marine section. Weasel, weasel makes sense. Weasel. I know they live in the ground. That's fine. Yeah, the platypus is definitely a mixed monster already. I, I get it. But that's fine too. Salamander. Yeah, skip the cicadas. Okay, let's take the cicadas out. I want to add cicadas to flying creatures. Okay, good. Wombat. Good lord. Yes, that's right. Um, wombat. I think, isn't the wombat a, what is it, it's a burrowing, plant-eating, well there you go, Australian marsupial, 
which resembles a small bear with short legs. Well, we got it all there. Thank you. <laughs> no, let's just let's take that whole section there. <laughs> and we'll just try as a wom wombi. Where's my wombat? Wombat. Um, I'm not suggesting that I'm going to do this with every single one of them people, but considering it's going to be difficult, uh, borrowing plant eating marsupial. Get rid of Australian. Sorry, Australians, nothing personal, uh, which resembles a small bear with short legs. So we know what it looks like. Okay, a wombat. How about a shrew? What ET base? Hello, ET. How are you? Well, let's 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 look up shrew. The only rule platypus doesn't break the um, the bat beats uh, beat them to it flying. Yeah, 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 yeah. The platypus does quite a lot, doesn't it? Um, yeah, I just if I put the if I put the bat on subterranean animal, then I just feel like I, I'm it's going to be it would be cheap on my part to also add it to the flying animal list and that's that's part of my that's I mean maybe that's my issue there I don't know um we'll put I'm gonna I'll, look Fred I'm gonna put bat here I'm putting a question mark beside it I'll think about it if we wind up running a big list of subterranean animals then the bat and a few others might look look dodgy for retaining Clams, mussels, burrow. Yes, they do, but they're subterranean. Um, they're um, they're marine. They're marine creatures that that burrow. So I want to leave the the shrew. Let's do the shrew. Let's have a look at shrew. True is it is a shrew. Um, crabs, crabs. It's a marine animal. It's a marine animal. So let's so so not a bad idea. Dungeons and Chronics, but crab. So subterranean, as in in the ground. We're going to avoid flying if we can, and we're going to avoid marine and land-based. So it's got to it's got to primarily have its home in the ground. Let's try to do that one. Shrew, it's like a mole. Oh, is it? With good vision, I didn't know that. That might be a bit cheap to put down shrew then. A small insectivorous mammal. Okay, resembling a mouse. Okay, that's all. actually mice is a good point. We should have added that one. Prolonged. Now, a shrew is basically a mouse, isn't it? Did we have mouse? We didn't have mouse here. Let's add mouse. Shrew, mouse. And yes, mouse and rat are pretty much the same. So I'm just going to classify mouse and rat as the same thing. So we're not putting rat in as well. Because I know they, they go in the ground as well. You reckon, Fred? Well, we'll see how we go. I just, I just don't want to. I just don't want to. I don't want to repeat myself too much. The, I mean, it's bad enough sitting here. And okay, I'll put the cicada back for now. How's that? I'll put the cicada back for now. I've left the other ones here. But if we wind up with too many in the in the. Uh, the list of a hundred, then I am cutting and stripping things back. At this point, I don't think we're running out. <laughs> I think we're going to be all right. Um, okay, moving on back to animals and creatures that I had found that were in the ground. Burrowing owl. I'm going to leave that one alone. Um, it's a rabbit. A fox. A fox is basically a dog, isn't it? Peri as a peri dog. So it's a dog. Fox, dog, kind of the same thing if you ask me. Um, but fox is, let's go with, let's go with fox. Fox it is. Uh, next, what else have we got on this list? We've got weasel chipmunks. What the heck is a chipmunk? Do they live in the ground? Are they, a, do, I thought they lived in trees or is that just my misunderstanding about the chipmunk? I'm kind of curious now. Chipmunks. Chipmunks are small, uh, trepid rodents of the um, of the family Blah -dee Blah, found in North America, with an ex exception of the Sabrin, which is found primarily in Asia. Do they live in trees, or do they get? Do they live in? Oh, hang on. 
The Eastern Chipmunk is an excellent tree climber and an even better burrower digger. I see. I see. Now I am starting to understand. They do dig in the ground. Armadillo. Nocturnal and they burrow. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, I'm going to leave rat alone. Rat, rat is, is just another mouse, basically, isn't it? Rat, mouse, looks exactly the same. We're not going to get very much more from that, are we? Um, chipmunk. Yeah, this is the problem, is that there's going to be so many rodents that fall into this bracket, aren't there? Armadillo is nice and different, though. It's more squirrel than dog, is it? Squirrel. I feel like, do squirrels burrow? Or oh, I thought they were up, go up trees. Am I, lo am I lost here? Chipmunk, here we go. Chipmunk. Chipmunk. <clears throat> okay, I got chipmunk. <laughs> armadillo is a good idea though. I think I had armadillo down here. Armadillo, I'm going to cut it from this one. All right, so it looks like we're doing uh, more than one thing. Come back to you. Armadillo. Arm my dillo. Arm my dillo. Here we go. Armadillo. It's on the list, Matt. It's on the list. Uh, what's a picus? What's a picus? If I miss something, people, I'm tr I'm not deliberately trying to do that. Chipmunks are borrowing. <laughs> are they? <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I don't normally I don't normally allow that word in the in the chat, but I did press that show. Okay, <laughs> so try to keep the language under control, people. I know some animals are not ones that you want to have around. Termite, geez, that's the termite is kind of like an ant, though, isn't it? But no, I get your point. An armored possum, um, geez. I know possums are in trees because we've got them here in New Zealand. Uh, they they come over from Australia just to visit on a holiday. Those um <laughs> anyway, so let's let's have a squirrel, armadillo, termite, chipmunk, picus. I don't know what that is. I have no idea what what you've put in here, Charles. But I'm I'm typing it in. I'm going to find out. Picus. What is a picus? A burrowing late. Largo morph mammal of the family, oh, bloody, 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 blah, blah, blah. Short round ears, round body, and r rudimentary tail. Picus, is the, uh, this seems like a, it's a, it's just a rat, isn't it, or a mouse? Picus? It is. It's just a mouse. Picus. All right. We're going we're gonna to have a lot of problems, I can see. There's going to be so many overlaps in these animals. Um, but it would certainly, if I added it to the list, that we would wind up with a bigger list, for sure. Some squirrels-related um, rodents borrow for homes, then live in trees, also related to rats. Yes. No, no, no apologies required. I am just trying to keep it. <laughs> it, was it was funny. I could tell, Charles, that you obviously had an issue with chipmunks. Uh, <laughs> termite. Termite is next. Squirrels. Squirrel is, they're, they're a little bit different. It's yet another rodent. Squirrel. 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 All right, well, look, we, we can cut and, uh, and chop our way, um, out, you know, stuff out of here as we go. Termite. Let me just do termite. Is termite really just another type of ant? Termite. 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 Terminate. Terminate. How did I get terminate? It's supposed to be termite. Term. Come on. Try again. Term. <laughs> My brain's not term. Ite. Termite. Define. Here we go. Right. What do we got here? It's an insect. Yes, I know this. A small pale soft-bodied insect that lives in large colonies within several different um, casts typically within a mound or cemented earth many kinds feed on wood okay so now i want to see what what does the termite look like that's what we're testing it's an ant it's an ant termite's an ant 
Oh, hang on. It's a, is it slightly different? Is it got an over large head on it or not? Termite. It just feels like it's an ant. Termite. Is the difference between a termite and an ant that the head is exceptionally large? I feel like that's what's going on here. Bent antennae of termites. Oh, okay. So a termite is essentially got a bigger head on it, correct? Termite, than an ant. Hamster, another variant of rat, yes. Uh, Egon says, hello. <laughs> Spores, molds, and fungus. <laughs> Lovely. Nice, nice, nice. Let's have a look here. Um, termite. I'm putting a question mark beside termite because I feel like it's just an ant. Really not convinced. I I I want enough variation in the uh, in the animals that we we get some interesting monsters coming out of the uh, the other end. Our monster generator needs to be interesting, right? Um, a mongoose. So many so many animals look exactly the same. What is a what is this? What the heck is this? Is a North American part uh, Chinese pangolin? Pangolin. What's a pangolin? Uh, now I need to know what it looks like. What is a pangolin? No, they're not gonna. They ain't gonna help me. Let's try this pangolin. Let's find out what a pangolin is. Pangolin. Because we could wind up with just a huge list of um, mammals if we're not careful. Oh, good lord. Is that a type of armadillo? Is a pangolin a type of armadillo, people? Because it kind of looks like an armadillo. But it's it's different again. Pangolin. So it is different. To, okay, I feel like rats uh, kind of fill the uh, subterranean burrowing niche and then um, diversifying there. Lots of things um, end up being rat-like. E exactly. Um... Yeah. Okay. So this is so subterranean is going to be a little tricky. I'm not. I, I feel like we'll we'll get past it though. Pangolin. Does anybody know? Is a pangolin just another type of armadillo? Because I feel like it is. It does have some variational differences to it, doesn't it? Though. Its armor is looks very different. Its shape is very different. Pangolin. Okay, pangolin is like an anteater and armadillo. Okay, so it's... Do we include armadillo? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, 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 now, I'm now finding myself like aardvark. I had aardvark. I don't know if aardvarks actually burrow in the ground. No idea. Have no idea. Um... R P P R M O P P P. Don't know what to do with that. Let's put it pang, pang molongs. I'll, I'll put it in, but I'm putting a question mark beside it because I'm not completely convinced about the pangolin. I don't think it's got enough variation on our animal thing. I mean, this is this is going to be my biggest problem. Is right having enough different bodies and features can we do a hundred is it even possible for subterranean okay all right let's let's go back to the list this list is not complete by 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 any means so i suspect we we're going to find ourselves having to go somewhere else let's do that 20 animals that live underground we don't want just 20 i want a 100 oh i'd forgotten spiders do don't they we can put spider Spider is a good idea. Naked mole rat, yeah, we got that. Um, the the mouse spider, but spiders tend to can, often. You'll find that spiders do live in the ground. Peri dog is just like a little. Um, 
Billy Berg, Billy Berg, yeah, Billy Berg, Mole, Termite, Badgers, Burrowing Owl, okay, I'm putting the Burrowing Owl in there, <laughs> it keeps coming up, go away, all right, Burrowing Owl, that's there, okay, so, Worm, yes, worm, thank you, somebody, ah, I was like, we were stuck there for a minute, but Matt, you've got us back on the scorpion, they, yes, they do too, scorpion, worm, in German the word bat means flying mouse or rat, does it? Well, I put bat down, okay, so, uh, worm, let's put worm, worm, Fred is having trouble with worm, worm, that's very different in terms of its structure, scorpion, good idea, Scorpion. Can't, I can't even imagine if I had to do this sort of stuff myself on my own. I want to make up a, a list of 100 subterranean animals that I can use to make monsters with. That'll be easy. Uh, <laughs> okay, what have I What have I lost? Pangolin, and worm, rat, da, da, da. I think we've got that one there. Um, squirrel. Olum, eek. Goblin results, no. Okay, so, spider. I had did almost forgot spider. Let's put the spider on. QP spider. Spider. Why am I having a spider? Yeah, okay. There we go. We're adding the spider. Subterranean. Um, not all of them, I realize. Cut. Snake goes in. In. Goes here. Paste. Sweet. All right. Good. Doing well. Doing well. You like the idea of doing it? Well, look, if, if it can happen, if it can, if we were doing land-based animals, this would be a piece of cake. Subterranean, I feel like, is a little bit more complicated. Uh, even if we were doing marine animals, piece of cake. If we were doing flying animals, we'd wind up with just a whole lot of birds, basically, which is, oh, no. <laughs> and animals that burrow rabbits we've done that okay so let's jump out of this but this is not helping us anymore image of i don't want image of i just 31 animals that burrow underground a to z list of pictures with pictures sweet give me that sounds good well of course we're going to have a mole first an aardvark so an aardvark is kind of like a armadillo, but not. There is actually quite a bit of a difference. But they they actually burrow underground. Does, does anybody know this? Is this true? Does an aardvark actually go underground? Yeah, we. Yeah, Charles, you're right. We've started on the super hard mode. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not that easy. This one. This is actually the the difficult one. <laughs> We've picked the hardest one first. Aardvark. And because so many things are like ard, ard, fuck, so many of these things are going to be hard to sort of nail down, like what do they look like? It's going to take, I'm going to have to put descriptions in. I have no, no choice. It's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be brutal. Anyway, not to worry, not to worry. Might as well start with the hard stuff first, right? <laughs> I, I have no idea if that makes any sense. We've done ant. Funnel web spiders. Okay, funnel web spiders also go in the ground, so they are subterranean underground. I kind of figured that was the case. The prairie, prairie dog, which basically just looks like a another rodent squirrel thing. We're just going to leave it. Um, a gooper, pocket gooper, looks like a little rat um, or mouse. Oh, we've got a rat here. Um, borrowing owl, well, fine, it's staying on the list now. A borrowing urchin, a borrowing urchin is, oh, yeah, but the, it's it's subterranean. Well, I'm, it's subterranean, but it's also marine. I'm leaving it alone. A pika, pika is a little mouse. Tortoise, is the desert tortoise actually burrow into the ground, people? Please let me know. I don't know about this. Because if I can add tortoise, that's, that just opened up the whole options. Please tell me tortoise is correct. Is a, desert, is a tortoise, a desert tortoise, actually going to dig and burrow in the ground? Because if it does, 
Sweet. Sweet. I'm sure somebody's going to tell me in a second or not. I'm going to put it here. Put a question mark beside it because I don't know. I have, an, I have no idea. Uh, okay, that's 10. Squirrel, we got you already. Wombat. We got Wombat already. And it's a Wombat, the Chipmunk, Digi, they all just seem the same. A Badger, we've got you. We've got the Mole. We've got Rabbit. Pangolin. 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 This Pangolin thing is, I mean, it's a mammal, but it's, it, it does look quite different, doesn't it? A Billy Berg. Billy Berg. It does burrow. Okay, tortoises do burrow. Okay. All right, thank you, Matt and Charles. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, weasel, we've got weasel. Penguin. It's also, do they, do, do penguins dig in the ground? It's black and white penguin species found in coastal areas of South America. Oh, here we go. These wonderful penguins will create burrows underground to protect themselves against predators and other, but it's also a marine animal. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Well, it does say it goes in the ground, and it seems like, and it has its eggs there. That kind of fulfills the requirement, doesn't it? Penguin. Wouldn't have guessed it, penguin. Somebody's going to look at this list and say, what are you talking about, penguins? Really, Fred? Penguin? Eh, whatever you You don't know what you're talking about, Fred. Penguin it is. Paste it. We're penguinizing it. <laughs> uh, next down here meerkat the meerkat is it's not really the, I guess the meerkat's not really jubel it's not really rat it is yet another m um, mammal rodent creature um, it's not like I've got something against the uh, mammals people it's, that's not, not the problem um, I'm just as I said variation is what we're looking for Meerkat. I suppose we can put meerkat in there. Copy. And meerkat M for mere. Meerkat. Okay. Meerkat. It's in. It's down. Let's have a look. Continue on my little uh, search. Uh, we've got the armadillo already. An otter. Do they dig? Well, I th actually, they probably do, don't they? Because otters build dams, and so they have to dig stuff up. They probably do, but they're also they also mar um, marine or yeah, Matt. I honestly, I, I looked at penguin, and I I, I guess that's a one type of penguin. It's probably not all penguins. The otter. Does this mammal dig holes? Does it spend a lot? Of, I thought it spent its time in a, in a dam. These den systems are meant to protect the large families of otters. Though. Okay, so uh, known for its thick fur, bloody water, the river otter is well adapted in living in aquatic habitats. Yes, the otter will often create... Okay. Sweet. Sweet Jesus. Here we go. <laughs> the otter. Uh, there's a bit of crossover. Looks like we're going to have no choice about this. Um, Otter. O-P. O-P-Q. Q, Q, something like that. I think it's about there. Otter. Okay. All right. I still want to put the otter into um, into the mammal creatures, into the marine creatures. Platypus. We've got it. As Fred has pointed out many times, we've got fox. Uh, the shrew, the shrew, spider, it's a tarantula, termite, we've got that, another spider, uh, more spiders, what the heck is that, a red bellied marmot, just looks like another rodent, it probably is, it's a mammal, it's another rodent, in it. Okay, so this is um, this is a little bit more interesting. Conclusion, conclusion. 
under making a hundred underground animals is not so easy, Marmot. I don't know. I'm feeling. I'm not feeling um, pre predisposed to put in a marmot in there. Yeah, that marmot is a thick, strong marmot. So we've created burrows for colonies of up to twenty individuals that also inhabit during the winter and bloody, 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 bloody blah. It's not that exciting, marmot. But how many have we got in our list so far? Well, not that many. Not that many, if any. Now, well, I mean, I don't consider a list of that subterranean really what? I mean, I suppose that's about as many as we usually get in one session. We've got 28 different creatures from small to large that go underground. And I mean, I guess we haven't done too badly. Okay, I need to take a break so I can let my, my brain sort of catch up with all of this. So I think what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm even wondering, do we want to continue doing this list? Or, you know, because it's, it's going to get... It's going to just get harder to do it. Or do we want to come back? Roaches. A cockroach. Great idea, Matt. Great idea. Oh, beavers do the dams. Okay, thank you, Charles. Okay, so <laughs> my, my phone is not caught up with me. So that's why I was uh, a little bit behind. Um, but a cockroach. Absolutely. Let's put cock. Cockroach. 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 Why am I having trouble with this? Uh... Now, now, now I've now I've forgotten how to uh, cockroach. Ah, that'll be it. So let's do the cockroach. I'm fine with that. The cockroach is kind of like a beetle, but it's I suppose in in terms of its body, it's it is slightly different. Cockroach. It does feel like just another beetle though, doesn't it? Okay, so that's that's not too bad. So let's uh, let's do this. So cave cockroach. Let me just do the the type in a little um, message hashtag. Actually, I'm going to end this existing poll. I'm going to take my break in a second. I'm going to put up a new poll, and when I come back, then I know how we're going to want to continue. So um, hashtag. Uh, no, not hashtag here. Do we want to continue with subterranean animals? Okay. Let's see if I can get this to actually correct the spelling. Since suddenly I didn't manage to type anything in correctly we go yes no undecided I'm starting to understand the the benefit of having a list of something like this because this would be really hard to do if you did it on your own um, so I can see a lot of value in it it's just going to be really time consuming so I'm putting out a poll here. Do you want to continue with subterranean and um, subterranean animals? Um, that is my new poll I've put up. I'm going to take a break in a second. Hashtag, um, hashtag, uh, give me some more animals to add to the list. And yes, toad. Does a toad go underground, Matt? Toad. All right. I now I'm I'm now I'm okay. I, I've got to take a break. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to come back. Arnold's going to look after you. That's Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't pay him anything, by the way. I'll be back in about five or less minutes, and then we'll proceed. So come up with some ideas. Decide in the um, poll what you want to do, and I will go um, empty the lizard.
Okay, I'm coming back. Hopefully people have made some decisions. Ugh. I know I, I have. The next time I get this bright idea to try and do something that I haven't seen anybody else do before, I'm going to check to make sure it's not going to be that difficult. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, but uh, you get my face for a second before we switch over to our work screen. So uh, let's let's have a look. Looks like double checking. I have a good yeah. Uh, so yep, you, I'm doing the double checking now. Let's check to see what people had to say in the poll. Oh, we're continuing on the um, subterranean route. So we are knocking out the subterranean animals. <laughs> it seems clear to me that people want that done. Uh, all 35 votes, so I mean. But that seems to be where we're going. Okay. Uh, wombat worm. I've got, so derp, we've got wombat already, I'm pretty sure. And we've got worm for sure. But I am almost completely sure wombat and worm are on the list. Okay, so that's not a problem. Toads usually burrow one to two feet into the uh, ground to get below the, the frost line, although younger toads have been observed burrowing less deeper, so they do. Well, that's awesome. We've got the desert turtle. I put down, to, um, to, I mean, dirt, desert tortoise, not turtle. Um, yes, it is a copy-paste. Literally, Matt, I did a copy-paste. Uh, and if you're doing a copy-paste, it's fine too. Um, most reptiles ha um, had a, um, a hat. Live where you can get the snow bill burrow. Okay. Reptiles. So I was thinking, somebody did say, somebody say, um, alligators near me make burrows. They, oh, do they? An alligator does. Yeah, when it comes to, to lists of subterranean animals, people dig it. Well, apparently they do. I have not been aware of this. Clams, yes, I know they do. But again, we, we're, we're venturing into some weird... Uh, okay. Fuck it. Here we do. Let's, let's, let's just go... Look, <laughs> I'm just not going to fight it now. <laughs> there's, there's 70 more to go. So there's just no point fighting it, is there? Why, why am I bothering? Let's just put it in. Clam... I should just put shellfish. There we go. Ha! Shellfish. <laughs> uh, <laughs> here we go. Shell. Fish. It covers a lot. Shellfish. It's in a shell. So we know what shellfish is. So let's have a look. Uh, somebody had said something about, and I can't remember exactly, toad. Toad, we'll add toad in there. Toady, 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 toad. So we're adding the toad. Uh, next, somebody said salamander. I don't know too much about the salamander. I'm assuming that's a, it's a lizard, right? So um, salamander. Lizard-like amphibious, long bodies, short legs. Da, 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 da. It's basically a lizard. A salamander is a lizard. Screw it. I put a lizard down. Where are we? Alpha lizard. Lizard. Here we go. Lizard. That's got a, a different body composition compared to everything else. Sweet. Next, um, toad that, da, da, da. okay, so I'm going to have to do a, a bit of research myself while, while you guys are catching up on this. Oh, by the way, since there's so many of you in here, as we talk about this sort of stuff, tomorrow is character building day. Same time as normal, 12 p.m. my time, whatever that time is for you, uh, but same time. I'm going to build a Barbarian for Pathfinder 2nd Edition with a character builder which is super simple and easy to use and completely free. 
So uh, for those of you who like character building and the nonsense we do around that, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, just thought I'd let you know, since some of you are into the character building stuff, but not everybody. If you wanted 100, uh, will be it will be weird. Yes, it is going to be extremely weird, um, derp. But uh, how how many times have you come to my channel and things have not got weird? <laughs> uh, there are cave creatures that burrow. Search would be would have skipped. Oh, okay. Uh, crawfish, lobster, ear clams, shellfish. Yes. Um, Toads and frogs burrow to hibernate. Okay, toad, frog. I mean, whether you call it toad or frog, I don't want to put down both. I want to just put down one if I can. Um, lobster, crayfish. I guess crayfish is different to shellfish, isn't it? And they do borrow, don't they? They do, they do. Crayfish do that as well, don't they? Oh, this is this is hard. This is a little, little, little hard. Okay, so let's um. Whether you call it a lobster or a crayfish, I don't really think it matters. But um. Pippy clam. We're just gonna. Oh look. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put in clam. If I put in clam. And I will put in, forget that because that's too broad. Shellfish, as you have pointed out, is actually quite wide. Wasp, this insect gets their name from habit of digging burrows in the ground. Yes, they do. And I know they they took me out big time one day. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm very much aware of their burrowing tendencies. Ugh. Uh, I just crawls when I think about it. Crayfish. Cray, cray, fish. Okay. Uh, Billy, Billy B. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to put it down. It's. It's. Too, it looks too much like a, a rat or a mouse. Uh, wasp. Yes, wasp. Okay, fine. It flies as well. I'll put the wasp down. It's a burrowing wasp. Wasp. I'm uh, sure a few of you are sitting there and thinking, how come you're putting that one down, but you won't put this one down? Fred, what's going on here? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, a bobbit worms. We've got worm already. Let's leave that. Lots of differences between crayfish and clam. Yeah. And sand dollar. Yeah, the, the difference between a crawfish or an, and a clam is pretty pretty significant. So, yeah. I think that'll work. Okay, so back to my list of subterranean creatures that we need to look at. Uh, let's find another list. The World Atlas. Animals that live underground. If it has a list of 100, I'm happy. It has a very small list. What's a pocket gerpus? Jupus, buddy, blue bloobs. I see most of these things here already. Mongoose. I mean, a mongoose is... Isn't a mongoose just... Oh, some, yeah, there's that r little rat again. Um, mongoose. Mongoose. Uh, I don't want to put mongoose down. I don't want to put mongoose down. Mongoose just looks like a... Yeah. Okay. All right. Go away. This is not helpful. So there are a few. Oh, okay. So it keeps going on a little bit, but not a lot. Okay. So stop. Come back here. No, 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 no. 20. 20. Peary dogs did a dwarf fox. I think this is mostly already done here, this one. Uh, I've got groundhog, oh, chipmunk. They all look pretty much the same, if you ask me. The borrowing owl, the little rat, the fox, mongoose, bloody that thingy. That's okay. Uh, yeah, that one. I've got it. We've got this. Got that. Got this. 
Kingfisher. Seriously, we've got Kingfishers here in New Zealand. Yeah, I, I did. I turned down at least 50 different hornets. Hornet's just another wasp, isn't it? Check out OLM. Olam? Yeah, Fred, I, I totally get it. Mongoose is a, a weasel-like creature. It does. It feels like just another weasel. It's exactly what I was thinking. Kingfisher. Do they actually... Kingfishers are found globally except for Antarctica. Instead of in the nest, the nest these birds build burrows in softwood trees, dirt banks, and other term, or old termite mounds. They use their... Oh. A kingfisher. I didn't realise this. We have them here in New Zealand. Never found one, though. Just seen them. Kingfisher. K. H. I. B. T. D. M. G. H. I. J. K. Kingfisher. That's not what we want to do, Fred. <laughs> That's not going to work. But I could just copy and paste. King. Sorry. Fisher. Kingfisher. Sweet. Got the kingfisher down. Centipede. Now, somebody had mentioned centipede before, and I may have got lost. Um, but centipedes are probably relatively different, and they probably do burrow, don't they? I'm just going to type in this one here. Matt has typed in... What is that? What the heck is this? Oh, it's a type of lizard, isn't it? It's a lizard. Oh, it's a, it's a salamander. It's a lizard. Yeah, we've got lizard. I put I just put salamander as lizard. It's another lizard. So we'll leave that one. Um, I put down lizard anyway. It's close enough to that. Centipede, though. Centipede's a good, good idea. Somebody had mentioned this before. I can't remember. Derp. I probably just missed it. Too much talking and not pay, paying enough attention. Any type of... And... Centipede. Um, I did a lot of research on the centipede for the uh, Remoraz uh, when I did that video. Tell ya, you learn a lot. You learn a lot when you try to figure out the biology of a monster. <sighs> Have a dip. Um, uh, including in soil. So they do. They live in soil, so they probably do dig around in the... All right, so fine. Centipede. Well, that gives us a bit of variation, doesn't it? That's a very different thing going on there. Centipede. Cent. Cent my peds. There we go. Centipede. Let's add it on. For those of you who are wondering, hang on, Fred, I thought you said Pathfinder Second Ed Edition was hard to build a character for. I'm I stand by it. It is a hard to build a character for. Second Ed Edition, First Ed Edition was painful as well. Um, but the software package that I found, or this website that's free, makes it pretty easy. Hence why I'm doing it. And if anything would allow me to move people who are playing D&D 5e to Pathfinder easily, I would do that because that is where my heart is. <laughs> if I can take money away from Wizards of the Coast, I would. Um, it won't be very much, I imagine, because there's hardly anybody watching my channel, but that's fine. I'd still do it. Uh, <laughs> next I don't, I don't know what this is it, it's just a mole isn't it it's just another yeah badger polar bear do polar bears dig in the ground they probably do somebody tell me that oh jeez they do look polar bear are a top apex predator in the ant um, in the arctic where they live Although they have four inches of fat to keep them warm, they also build underground burrows to shelter them from the extreme temperatures. Yeehaw! Polar bear. <laughs> Hello, polar bear. How are you? You're going on my list. Polar bear. Who would have guessed? 
I wouldn't have. It would have not got got to me. Polar beer. Sweet ass. Whoa. Take that. How about a tick? What's the cliff notes? Uh, hello, Pale Rider. How are you doing? You just got here. We are building. So you want to know what's going on? We are building subterranean animal lists. So it's a subterranean animal list. We're trying to get to 100 subterranean animals. I can assure you now we've got to 38. This is actually very difficult to do. Much harder than doing land-based creatures. Would probably be even easier if we're doing flying. And if it was marine, it would be a piece of cake. This has got to be the hardest one. Um, E.T., Let's try, let's, what is a tick? A tick is blaze, basically just a flea, right? A tick is a flea. And, yeah, it is. It's a tick is a flea. And they do, they do dig around in the, in the dirt, don't they? They do burrow. But they don't just burrow into dirt. They burrow into your body. That's the, that's the horrible shit. We'll put it on. Um, sorry about the uh, language, people. Um, flea. Uh, flea. A flea is a tick. Good, good, good idea, ET. Got it. Uh, so Dungeons and Chronics, I believe termite has been added. I was tempted not to put termite on because it felt like it was just another ant, but somebody has explained to me that uh, actually the head is slightly larger than a normal ant, so it has got some variation on it, but it is pretty much the same if you ask me. Um, Okay, yellow jackets are very small wasps, sometimes called uh, wet bees. So I, I think, let's figure it out. We've got wasp already, so why do we need to put that down? Insect larva. A reach. I'm trying laugh out loud. Matt, it's actually not a bad idea. i got spider already, by the way. Got spider. Bees and wasps. Yeah, exactly. Whether we call it a bee or a wasp, I mean, does it really matter? Um, I think we've got it. So, centipede is on the list. Got that there. Lava. It doesn't have to... Insect lava might actually be an, an interesting idea. How would you do that, though? What if you... Okay, I'm going to roll the table to get the head for my monster, and I get insect lava. I roll for the body of my uh, monster, and I get insect lava. I roll for the legs for my monster, and I get insect lava. So what you do is you wind up getting insect lava. <laughs> I think that's the problem. You won't get much variation on insect lava because there's not much going on there. <laughs> so, so I think that's the only problem is if you rolled on it, Matt, even though I, I'm, 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 I'm on board for the idea, the end result is you get a, a boring monster. You get insect lava. <laughs> so, so it's going to be a little bit of a problem. Um uh, so, uh, a jav javelin, a javelinia. Oh, I've never heard of this. I can now got to type it in. All right, give me a second. Let's let's find this thing. Uh, javelinia. What is a javelinia? It is a type of pig. Another North American um, little sucker, eh? Okay, let's have a look. Uh, what does it look like? It is a pig. It is a pig. And does it does it dig holes? Um, I don't know. People pick like you know. Okay, the word is okay. Here we go. It's a white. It's a wild boar, so we can call it pig or boar. Actually, now that I think about it, we have um, we have wild pigs in New Zealand, and those little suckers do dig holes. They're also vicious. Uh, and, yeah, if I remember right, you're probably right. They do actually dig holes. Evolution, domestication, da-da-da. Do they dig holes? They probably do. Oh, they do. <laughs> it's basically a hot, um, uh, they dig holes. I'll put pig on here. 
How do I wind up with pig on here? I don't know. <laughs> pig. All right. That's not. That's a funny one. Ravenous molts. I've got. Um, we've got. Cra um, cra we've got crayfish here already. Um, you've got crawfish. I just. It's crayfish for me. Um, we've got mole. Um, honey badgers. We've got badgers. We've got badgers already. Hello, JP. How are you doing? Honey badger rating is for vor um, um, voracious little. <laughs> Seriously, Dick. Yes, well, we've got them. Kill dogs, leopards, lions. Mm-hmm. We have bats. We do have bats on the list. It took a while for um, Fred uh, Hubbard to actually convince me, but it's on the list, so you, you don't have to fret. I haven't lost it. Apparently, apparently, I can be um, I can be turned around. It takes a little while sometimes. I just make the life my life diff more difficult. Oh, you just just come up with like a hundred different subterranean animals that are relatively different from each other. No problem. Um, okay, hang on. Most of them are very similar. <laughs> I, what else is there? Subterranean stuff. List of underground. What lives under? Under your feet. Ooh, let's. Is this got me uh, some good stuff here? Come on, give me something. What lives underneath my feet? Tell me now. That is not going to help me. Decomposers, dehydrators, insects. Well, yes, I, I get it. Anthropods, worms, mammals. Yeah, reptiles, amphibians. Okay, that ain't going to help in the slightest. You useless website. Um. 24 brilliant burrowing animals. I think we've already kind of done this one, but we'll have a look. We've got the platypus there. Okay. Fred's, again, made his point. Uh, we've got the mouse. There are so many things that look like a mouse. Uh, we've got you. We've got you already. We've got you. Now I put the meerkat down, although the meerkat looks very similar to the weasel. Meerkat just looks like another weasel, really. It is. It just, it's just not, you know. Uh, I got ants. Didn't put Perry Dog down. I put the the bearing that the owl is there, the penguins there, wombats there, uh, urchin. Fine, taking it. Uh, where does it go? S T U V U V S T U V. It'll go here. The urchin. Somebody had said it. It's it's going down, urchin. Spiky egg. Ah, uh, whoops. Okay, spiky. Round. Sea egg. I guess that what it is. Yeah, but I I don't want to put it down. A peri dog. It came up a lot, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you get no legs if you... <laughs> crabs, oh, that's right. Here we go. We, we... <laughs> I said no to crabs before, but yes, they do dig holes. And yes, I know they're underwater. So I've got to put crab down. And crab is different enough from a crayfish, isn't it? Crab. Yep. And we go... <sighs> Just to give you an idea, people, of how difficult it must be to work with me, I'm a cancer, okay? That's my star sign. We are stuck in our ways sometimes. It is very hard to shift us. <laughs> well, we've got snake already. You don't have to worry about that. We've got snake. Earwig. Isn't an earwig just another... What does an earwig actually look like? I think it's just a centipede, isn't it? Isn't an earwig just that? Earwig. Fine. What is an earwig? It's a long, elong elongated insect with a pair of terminal appendages that resemble pincers. What does it look like? Oh, I see. It's not beetle. It's not ant. But you're right, earwig. And it's terrifying. It's very similar to the beetle, the ant. And a termite. 
but its differentiation is that horrible thing on the end of it, which if you were making a monster, is, I mean, that's nightmare fuel as it is. Airwig it is. I'm adding the airwig. I feel like, you know what's going to happen. I'm going to wind up caving and putting all the other things you guys have suggested. It's going to happen, isn't it? It's just a bit, it's just more a matter of like, how long will it take for Fred to finally give in? <laughs> that's what it's going to wind up being. Um, paste, airwig. That's nightmare fuel. Let's put that down. All right. Well, if, if, if you can, if, if I'm putting that down and I'm putting ter um, termite down, I should be putting it down wetter. Because if any of you have seen a wetter, and those things do burrow in the ground, yeah, that is some nightmare fuel for you there. Okay? And they're huge. And if they get stuck in your hair, it's not good. And they hurt. They're not poisonous. Well, not particularly poisonous. Um, but they hurt when they bite because their mandibles are so large and they're quite powerful. It's not like you're dealing with a little ant. You know, when an ant bites you, it's nothing in comparison to these little suckers. Look at that on his face. What a place to go. And it's heading for the hair. Never get him in the hair. All right, so wetter. We're adding the wetter. My contribution from New Zealand, you're welcome, um, the wetter. Um, wetter, wetter, wet, wet, ah, uh, wetter, uh, something like that. The wetter. <laughs> okay. Um, what's this? Mudfish. Does a mudfish dig silverfish? Now, I'm, now I'm getting uh, Rotterdam. What's a Rotterdam? What's a Rotterdam? Crayfish hurts. Yeah, no, crayfish. We've got crayfish. i got crab, crayfish. That's down. What is a potato? Is a potato bug actually going to be any different, Matt? Are we going to... Have we got something different body types going on here? Potato bug. It's a beetle, basically. It's basically just a beetle. There's nothing particularly fancy going on there's a potato bug okay all right it's a beetle okay um yes there are land crabs as well i'm aware um some go up into trees that's not good too okay so next we're calling the illust uh pinch buds a lot of insects are gonna sort of stick out Big Kid, hello Big Kid, Big Kid is a patron, what have you got here Big Kid, you've got here, you've typed in something, I'm not sure what this is, what is that, I have, I have no idea what that's all about, like a mudfish, <sighs> mudfish, mudfish, somebody's got silverfish, but uh, do mudfish actually, I suppose, you're not going to get very much going on um, if it's a mudfish. Um, but there's not much to the little sucker. But is it actually digging the ground? They do. Okay, mudfish. <laughs> you won. Mudfish it is. Mud. M, 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 M. Where are you, you sucker? Ah. Here we go, right here, after the mouse. After the mouse, we'll put in the mudfish. If I type in silverfish, is it going to actually come out and look a little bit different to the mudfish? If it, <laughs> because I can assure you, when we do marine, I am not typing in various different fishes. It's just going to be fish. That'll be it. Okay, silverfish. Oh, I see. A silverfish. A silverfish. Um, wingless insect. It just basically looks like a um, a bug. It looks like a beetle. It kind of looks a little bit like a beetle a centipede. Um, I don't know. I'm going to leave it off. I put the mudfish down. 
mud bug? What's a mud bug? Is a mud bug gonna give us something cool? Mud bug. Now that's mud fish, Fred. You gotta put bug. Starts with a B. Bug. Okay, alright, so I've got mud bug. A mud bug is a crayfish. Mud bug. Yeah, it's just a crayfish. That's what it is, isn't it? And that's as far as I can tell from the pictures. Okay, so that's, well, let's not worry too much about that one. Um, beetles make up about 40% of all insects, exactly. Exactly, which is part of a, um, a mollich subterranean humanoid. What's a mollich? Aardvark. Uh, big kid, I got the aardvark down. Turtle is not really going to dig holes. Frog, we've got uh, we've got to actually toad is uh, and turtles. We will put it under toad, so we've got that down. Um, mountain lion. So one of the things I did discover, um, Matt, is that lions don't usually we we um, live in caves, but you do make a good point that mountain lions. Are very different to African lions, are they not? The molich, the squishier, are they? Silverfish are squishier. Uh, okay, all right. Let, let me just let me just talk, type this in because I don't really know that much about that, so I'm kind of curious. Uh, molich. What the heck is that? There's something weird going on here. It's a harmless spiny lizard. Okay, okay, so it's a, it's a mulch is a lizard. We've got lizard down. We could have a, a gazillion different lizard um, names in here, and it would still just be, it's a lizard. Um... <laughs> This is this is the problem of this making this list. Look, we we are just under halfway there in terms of making the list. Okay, some tigers and other big cats make caves burrows in their home. Okay. Let's have a look here. So, what do we call it? We're going to call it big cat. Or we just call it cat. If we're talking about, if we just say cats dig holes, well, a dog dig holes too. And there are pure prairie dog. Oh, now, now we're putting. I'm not going to put down prairie dog. I'm just going to put down dog. Ah, uh, cat. We've got mere cat already, though. That's the thing. Is if I put down cat, we've got mere cat. Screw it. Where are you, meerkat? See that? Getting rid of it. Bam. I'm having a I'm having a tantrum. <laughs> and I'm just gonna go over here. And No. Try it again. No. Do it again. Cat. There. Dog. Where are you, dog? Dog. Dog. There you go. Dog. Not all dogs live in the ground or dig holes, but yeah. Um, we probably do, but I never really caught any. A lot of rock cods. Um, you know, the rock fish was quite common. Kind of a pain and completely horrible to eat. <laughs> The mountain lion, African lions are very different, but they may still have mistaken you know, from close. Yeah, yeah. So look, I'll put cat and I'll put dog down. Okay, so we we we're done with those. We're good. So psh, that covers all of them. Sweet. How's that? <laughs> Cracked in the foundations. <laughs> Wolves live in caves. Uh, it's a just a dog. A wolf is just a dog. It's just a wild dog. That's all it is. Let's go back to our list of things. Uh, I put down urchin from here. This thing I don't care about. 
we got that already. We got that already. We've got you already. We've got the penguin. Um, and like, oh, that's a penguin basically. We've got a penguin. We've got a rabbit. We've got an armadillo. A vole. Shrimp. Shrimp is just basically a crayfish. Fox. Polar bear, much to my surprise. Okay. So. Maybe this list will only be 50, I am um, 50 subterranean creatures. Maybe that's a much easier number to hit. To actually give us decent variety and body shape. Because I... I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that's not the case, but I, I'm getting the distinct feeling that Subterranean might actually be a much shorter list. We have 45. If we get five more, that's 50. It's not as much as I would have liked, but I could probably live with it. Do you know what I mean? Must dogs relate uh, well with borrowing domesticated? Um, one reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Hello, Itchy. How are you doing? Hey, Fred. Can I use a gentle repose to keep my meat and vegetables from rotting during travel? Um, well, how does gentle repose in... You're talking about in 5e. I can't remember the wording. Just read the spell and check with your game master. So, Itchy... If you're trying to get me to give you a answer, are you the game master, Itchy, or are you a player playing in somebody else's um, game that they are game mastering or dungeon mastering? That's the question I need for you from you, Itchy, before I give you this answer. Because one of the things I'm aware of is people seek answers from me because they don't like the answer they got from the game master. And um, I'm just not going to be the person in the middle for that one, okay? So you let me know, are you the player in this game or are you the game master and you're just not too sure how to make a decision about this? If you want me to just give you a decision because you're the game master or dungeon master, that's different. I am not saying I will not answer your question though. But I just need a bit of perspective on that one. Yes, that is. And I have... I've put the um, the lion and the house cat together as the same creature. They physically they are the same. They just look the same. They're just bigger. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, and that's 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 the whole point of this table. It's about physicality. So we kind of got to base it off that. So yes, I'm doing that, um, Fred. Um, <laughs> you, you're right on the money there. L incredible animals that live underground. Does this does this help? Do animals no, that's not helping. Okay, here we go. Is there something here? Useless. Useless. Is there a chart? Tell me it's a big chart. That's a very small chart. Yep. Underground animals. Not a lot of them. Not a lot. If if a lot, not a lot. Not enough. Um a sea dollar. What's a sea dollar? Last humanoids. Hello, what do you got to hear? Um, what's that all about? Um, ancient dragon. The la later humanoids. What are the later humanoids? Shrimp has a softer body and no claws. Shrimp. Ah, uh, fine. Fine. I put shrimp on there. Shrimp. Put another shrimp on the Barbie, and that's not. <laughs> The, the fact that that saying even exists is, is hilarious. It was honestly a mistake. <laughs> um, so not plant animal. So that's what Fred is saying. Okay. I'm just pl a player looking to use the spell to have more variety of food than just rations. Um, never been a DM. General Repose says... A corpse or other remains doesn't rot for 10 days. So whatever your game master or dungeon master allows, check with them. And if that's the way it works, then that's the way it works. It might just look, again, Itchy, you're, you're, you're dealing with, it's best to ask, if that's what you want to do in the game, just ask your dungeon master or your game master, is this how you would um, rule that gentle repose works? Because that's what I'm sort of looking to do. And if it's not going to be possible, then don't take it. 
that's that's the easiest way to deal with that. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I've got the burrowing owl already. Yeah, no, I've got I've already got burrowing owls there. I I put it on the list. Are we limited to animals that are currently existing? No, no, use extinct animals now, people. Extinct animals. Extinct animals. Yes, that's what we want. Um, um, hashtag. Hashtag. Use extinct subterranean animals. Charles, brilliant. That just, that'll just make it so much easier now. Um, of course, we've run out of time. <laughs> uh, so here's here's what I would say. Let's go here. I'm going to put in a little little note. Extinct animals that burrow. There we go. Thanks. So I'll ask my DM. Sounds good. Right, that's the way to go with that one. All right, so we've that might actually make life a lot easier to get this this done, and that's going to probably make every other list we make easier as well. But what if I type in extinct subterranean animals? Hoo hoo, extinct. I should be going to work. Okay, seriously, I should be on my bike and going to work. But let's type this in so we can get. List of um, troglobites. What? Oh, that's a cave spider. Extraordinary and endangered cave dwelling animals. Uh, no, I want extinct. Like dead as a doorknob. Let's get rid of. Um, no. What is a subterranean? Well, we know that this this is not giving me subterranean fauna. That's not really an animal. Um, that's worms, anthropods, crayfish, others, fish, mammals. Yeah, I don't know. Subterranean. What if I put extinct subterranean? Dinosaur. Is there a subterranean dinosaur? Dinosaur. Can never have enough dinosaurs. Shizers. Meaning dig digging runner. There is a subterranean dinosaur. It is got a hell of a name. And what does it look like? Looks like this. Is that it? No. That it? No. Probably nobody looks no if we, if we don't know what the thing looks like that's going to be a problem. <laughs> how do you do how do you do it when the dinosaur is not actually got enough information on it? <laughs> that might be a bit of a problem. Hmm. Okay, so I, at least at least I know where to pick up with from this next week. And if I don't have any ideas uh, percolating through my mind for the subterranean, we're going to shift to a different list. Okay. All right, so Derp, you have chucked in a couple of names there. And again, I, as long as we have some idea of what the heck they look like, that'll help. Um, three, I'll come back to them. Uh, Neanderthal? <laughs> Okay, all right. So let's uh, let's let's see how we're doing here. I think look, we didn't do too bad in terms of our lists. Usually, we maybe get I don't know thirty done or fifty done in this time we have available. And today we've we've done reasonably well. I think we've covered a lot of it. Um, and obviously, we'll just come back and we'll keep working on it. Um, if if I feel like we're wasting a lot of time on the subterranean one. Since there is still the 
the um, the the marine animals to do the land and the um, the flying ones. We might just work on one that's going to give us a bit more product at the end. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm out of ideas too. So I'm I'm feeling like I just want to let the subterranean topic or um, sub um, subterranean animals percolate, and something will come to us, and I'll add it in so that we get plenty of variety. And if we wind up with only 50 rather than 100, then fine, the other lists will be easy to do 100 because they will just be so much easier to come up with ideas for. It's just, I just, I'm, I'm almost completely convinced of that. I don't think it's going to be an issue at all. So I'm, I'm fine with doing something like that. Uh, but yeah, core blimey, what a taxing process. Do you want to continue with subterranean animals? Well, we did it today. 64% of you said, yeah. No said 9%, 18 undecided, out of 11 votes. Well, next week we come back, I talk about monsters again, and we uh, we deal with that. A man plant. <laughs> Can you get the Discord link? I uh, would like to talk there about uh, five. Yeah, okay, let me get the Discord link for you. I'll drop it in before I go, okay? And Discord um, just a warning with regard to Discord, sending me messages, typing in messages on Discord is not going to work very well because I just don't have time to answer that stuff. If you can catch me when I'm doing a, um, a voice call or a video chat room thing, that's probably the best time to chat about that sort of stuff. Um, it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. I just get really busy. If if you guys can hang out for, you know, hang on there for another year and a bit, things will change for sure. Okay, here's the Discord link, people. There we go. And, um, yeah, I'll see those of you who are into character building tomorrow to build a um, a barbarian very quickly uh, for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Super, super simple, apparently. <laughs> who would have guessed? Anyway, uh, look, thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you to my patrons who support me so I can keep running this program every single week. Yes, we talk. I talk about monster law. Yes, I do. I talk about all sorts of stuff, and we make stuff. And, of course, at some point when we finish the product, it goes up onto Patreon. We've got a lot there already. <laughs> There's quite a bit, actually. Uh, so, yeah, thank you if you have just been watching, uh, if you're re-watching. If you've been in the chat and been helping, trying to dig up various, like, what's an, a subterranean animal? Hey, thank you to uh, Dungeons and Chronics Itchy um, for um, for the distraction. <laughs> Thanks, Matt, Derp, uh, Fred Hubber, Charles. I believe there's a few other here. Ancient Dragon, Big Kid was here as well. Um, Pale Rider. It, the list goes on, and I'm sure I'm going to miss somebody's name, and I'm going to feel real bad about it. But yeah, thank you for all of your ideas. E.T. E. T. was here. Um, don't phone home. It's all right. You don't need to go home yet. So, yeah, thank you, everybody. It's really been a fun time. So wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee, wee, early morning, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. And, hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. <laughs> we'll get you DMing one day, Itchy. Don't you worry. I'm all about that. Play and DM. That's the way. The problem is I don't want to do enough Q&As, do I? <laughs>